Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Weaver. I'm coming to you from our quarantine kitchen here in Southern California. And I'm the author of the Migraine Relief Plan. I'm a writer, recipe developer, and a speaking coach. And today I'm gonna to be, uh, this is kind of part two of the CSA box, the veggie box, which is community supported agriculture. So the previous episode, I kind of unboxed all of it and told you what I thought I would do with it. And now I'm going to show you how I would actually process what I would call process out all those fruits, all those vegetables that showed up so that they're ready to go, so that I'm ready to um, use them and I don't have to worry about them spoiling because when you spend good money on vegetables, you don't want them to spoil, right? So, um, so I had a bunch of carrots and I've, so I've washed everything very thoroughly. And one thing I want to say is that while you certainly can buy that fruit and vegetable wash that a lot of stores sell, it's not required. I did double check on the USDA and the and Purdue's websites and they said just a you know, thorough washing with regular tap water is fine, even with COVID-19. So that's what I've done. So I've got a bunch of carrots and I've scrubbed them. And oftentimes I don't peel carrots. It just depends on what I'm doing. But I might just, um, if you give them a good scrub, you don't, you, the skins are fine to eat. So I'm just gonna make sure that they're really nice and dry before I store them. And I'm probably gonna chop up some of these and freeze them just to make sure that they, um, that they don't go bad. And so I have all these, um, I buy these white kitchen towels. They're very inexpensive. I usually get them at Target. They're essentially like this big, right? So pretty good size. And then as they age, <laughs> they start looking like this, which definitely not pretty. But I use them all the time to keep fruit, fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables, um, kind of clean and dry. So I mentioned in the previous episode that you can eat the carrot tops. They are very bitter, so I don't love them, but I also don't want them to go to waste because I know they have a lot of great nutrients. So what I'm gonna do, what I'll do is, and I'll get to these a little bit later, is I'll, I wash them really thoroughly and then I'll roll them up in one of these towels and that absorbs the, the water and then it, they're pretty nice and dry when I wanna cut them up. You can also store stuff in a plastic bag rolled up like this and it'll stay pretty fresh for a couple days. So that's another tip. Um, so, I, you know, one of those free vegetable bags that they sell at the grocery store are good for those. Yes, do you have a question? So you don't put that in a plastic bag? Uh, I would, in, if I was going to go in the fridge, so uh, until I cut it up, right. I'll leave it like this. If I was going to store it... And the towel's it, taking the moisture the off of it. Yeah, and it keeps it fresh. So, like, if you have, like, a like um, cilantro or Italian mm -hmm. parsley, right. I'll wash it, I'll roll it up in a towel, and then I'll stick it in the fridge and the three days later it'll still be fine. So that's a way, because so you, you don't want this stuff to go bad. Okay. So all was sent to me by Melissa's Produce, melissas.com. They're not paying me, they just they did send me the free veg vegetables, but they're not paying me otherwise. So just want to be clear, it's a shout out to them. But you can order um, these organic vegetable boxes from lots of places around the country. So it's not per se a commercial for them. Um, so next up is the kale. So there was a bunch of kale and it happened to be curly kale. So again, here's another one of those towels. <clears throat> so it's been washed. Also, um, so this is what curly kale looks like. It's got a very thick stem. It's got very curly, stiff leaves. And this may be the kale that you've encountered. Um, this is kale from my garden, which is a different type of kale called Tuscan dinosaur or lacinato kale. It's the kale That's that I- I know. Um, it's so it's Italian. Uh, it's where it originates, and you can see that the stem is much much thinner. And um, so I I grow this because a because it grows really easily. It's um, very easy to prep, and it also um, you know I don't have to do as much with it. But it also if I I've tried growing this and the aphids just love getting oh, yeah. into these little <laughs> nooks and crannies. Yeah. So this is just a lot lower maintenance for my garden other gardens may be different. So I just wanted to show you the difference. Equally wonderful in terms of nutrition. So, um, but, you know, if I have a bunch of this, I'm just gonna slice this up because these stems are so thin and flexible. This is a different kind of stem and it needs to be treated a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So I'm gonna get this towel out of the way. So what are some towel. of the things you're gonna use the kale for? So the kale, um, so the, this particular type of kale, if you've ever had kale chips, 
Uh, they're either made usually in a dehydrator or a low oven. They're coated with some kind of yummy, like a cashew butter and spices mixture, and then they're baked sort of as a potato chip sort of substitute. I mean, it's really a very different thing. Um, that's what they make this from, and what they do is they just strip the, the stems right out, and then they just use the leaves. Oh, that's cool. However, a lot of the potassium, there's been a study that about, I don't know, I think it was like 70 or 80 percent of the potassium in the kale is actually in the stem, so you don't want to throw this out. You just need to treat it differently. So I'm just going to strip the strip the um, the stems off first, and you can just tear it, or you can use your hand and just kind of pull it. Um, sometimes you have to kind of do it as a two-parter. So I'm just trying to get all the, you know, and then this kale is really, you know, kind of stiff enough. I can just really just tear it into pieces, and this can be frozen. So as long as it's pretty dry, so I've, you know, I had it rolled up in a towel, as long as it's not real wet, you can just freeze it like this and then throw it right into a stir fry from the freezer. I do it all the time. And so, um, do you have to thaw it? Or? You don't have to thaw it. You just throw it straight into the pan frozen in it because it's a very tough green. So you, you don't freeze romaine lettuce, um, but you know, you can like, if we were going on vacation say and oh my gosh, I didn't get to, uh, you know, the fresh bag of, you know, mixed spring greens. I hate to waste food. So I have thrown them in the freezer, which you would never like use as lettuce or even in a stir fry, but you can throw it into a smoothie. Um, and then at least you're not wasting that organic produce that you bought. So again, this, I wouldn't even necessarily bother using a knife <laughs> on these. I would just tear it up and then um, store it in the freezer. I just put it in a gallon bag. What are you going to do with the stems? The stems I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. So the stems, so think of the stems as more like a root vegetable in terms of how it's going to need to be cooked. Let me just get this out of the way and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the stems. Because again, I don't want to waste all that great potassium. I'm on a low sodium diet. I have to take a potassium supplement because I'm on a diuretic for what's going on with me and um, so I, I, I don't want to lose any potassium. Potassium is very, very, very good for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off the very bottoms of these because they're kind of funky. And again, this is my pretty um, for the public cutting board, which is very slippery so I have to be super careful. Um, so again, I'm doing the claw technique of holding the vegetables, getting everything lined up, and then I'm going to slice very thinly because I want small, thin pieces. And then these can go in a vegetable stir fry mm. or a vegetable hash with the carrot, potato, sweet potato, anything that needs 10 or more minutes, you can put them in right away. So essentially you're getting almost another vegetable and I would just probably bag this up separately they can also be frozen. So again, what I do is if I'm prepping this many vegetables, a lot of it's going in the freezer ready to go, ready to go in the pan. And, and part three of this, I'm going to be making vegetable hash, so you're going to see how I, how I kind of cook all this stuff up together. I think the hardest thing is to figure out, for, like for me, it's like you have a vegetable, but like to be creative and to know what I can do with that. Right, and so my website, mygrainreliefrecipes.com, if you go there, and I'll share the link to that as well, uh, you can just put in what ingredients you have in the search, and it will tell you all the recipes that use those ingredients. Oh, okay. So that's another way. So now I'm just gonna prep you know, one carrot to show you how I prep a carrot. So usually what I do is I cut them lengthwise, and the way you do that is I have my hands on either side of the knife, I want to, I want to put the knife. I want to start the knife at the top, at the top end here, and get the point of the blade um, anchored on the board, and then I'm going to push down, so that way it doesn't slip and cut me, right? And then usually what I want to do is I usually quarter these, so I've got you know when I do them I don't I don't try to cut the whole carrot because that's going to be unstable. Mm -hmm. So I cut it in half, cut it in quarters, and now these these don't move, right? They don't rock because they're flat on the bottom. That's the challenge with cutting organic things, is nothing is flat. <laughs> so 
Um, and then I'm using the same technique, right? You keep the knife blade point down and you're rocking motion through towards your fingers that are in the claw, Daisy's back. She, she gets very worked up while we do these because she knows we're talking to somebody, but she doesn't know who we're talking to when she can't see them or smell them. So for some reason that gets her all juiced up. So we've just, we tried, we've tried putting her outside and she just stands at the door and whines uh, as she's whining right now. So, okay, so this is prepped up. This can go in a container in the fridge for two or three days, uh, and, or this can go in a baggie in the freezer. And, um, and so if I have this many carrots, now carrots will, if they're um, clean and dry or dirty and dry, and then you wash them when you're using them, either way is fine. Um, I would put them in some sort of a light plastic bag or a produce bag if you have it about a month in the fridge, they'll be fine. Same with potatoes and sweet potatoes. So they're good to buy during this um, COVID-19 thing because they don't spoil as quickly. Does it make a difference in whether they're cut or the whole as to how long they're gonna Yeah, work? so if they're cut, they're gonna start to degrade faster okay. because there's more surface area interacting with, uh, with uh, the oxygen, right? Great question. So I only prep uh, a small amount at a time just because there's only two of us, we don't eat a ton. But I will put, I might cut up all these carrots and put them in the freezer because then I can just pull out this much out of the bag into the stir fry or the vegetable hash. Okay, so let me show you. So the other thing I did was um, my romaine was just a little bit sad from being on a truck. So I put it in some water. So to see if that'll perk that up. Um, I had a whole beautiful thing of radishes, a bunch of radishes. So pulled those apart, ton of, ton of soil on the leaves of the radishes. So those got a double wash and then they went into the salad spinner. Radish so what, what do you do with the radish leaves? Okay, I'm gonna show you in a second. Okay, yeah, it's okay. So radishes, I usually cut the top and the tail off, get a nice flat end, cut them in half. And then you can, if I'm putting them on a salad, I'll cut them like this, nice and thin. And I'm trying to learn how to enjoy bitter um, foods because they have so many wonderful plant nutrients in them. So radishes are something I've kind of come around to. You can also cut them. So that's how I would prep them for salad. They also can be frozen, surprise, and they can go into stir fries. So for stir fries or veggie hash, I'm gonna do more like little chunks. So they're kind of the similar to the size of the carrot pieces. So that might be halves, quarter, and then, you know, eighths. Mm, veggie so hash, we have that every day. We have that every day for breakfast. Yeah, so that's part that's of good. our regular breakfast uh, situation that we have. So let me show you the radish tops, radish leaves. So a double wash through the salad spinner. You probably see there's still a little bit of um, soil in the bottom of that. That's good. We got rid of that. We don't want to eat the soil. Of course, if you're if it's organic soil, it is okay to have a little bit uh, in your diet. It actually provides a lot of really important uh, nutrients for your microbiome. But in organic vegetables, you do not want because they there's probably pesticides and herbicides in that soil. Okay, so what I would do with the, with the radish tops is probably roll them up. I'm just going to do it really quickly so you see. So I, I get it you know, in between, so I've got a surface on either side, roll them up fairly tightly, and then I'm going to chop those up and they're going to go in my stir fry. I would, don't freeze them, they're, the leaves are way too delicate. Um, okay, so broccoli, let's look at the broccoli. So I have washed the broccoli, I turn it upside down to try to get as much water out of it as possible. Now broccoli is a little bit different because I would normally just wash this is something that will go bad much more quickly. There's so much surface area, the water gets inside. <clears throat> so if I was gonna make broccoli for us for dinner, I would just take this one stem, wash it, prep it, cook it. I would leave the other dry and untouched in the fridge. But because I'm prepping all this food, I wanted to show you kind of what I would do with broccoli because um, these are the, called florets and this is the stem. Stem is edible. Leaves are also edible. Oftentimes they're um, not sold there at the store. 
But what I would do is take off the bottom, and then I'm going to peel it because the stem is all edible. And I want to make sure I get all the good edible bits. And so this, again, is a similar thing to the... Why, why are you using a peeler? I'm using a peeler because the broccoli stems can be kind of fibrous and woody. Um, same with like kohlrabi, which I don't have here, but and that's a vegetable that might like you might see in the grocery store. It looks really weird. You're like, I'm never going to eat that in a million years. It's quite delicious, but you have to know how to prep it, right? So what you, what I'm going to try to show you. Okay, this is not a super woody stem, and I don't know if you can even see it, but around the edge, if it's very fibrous, they'll almost be like a ring, like a tree ring, and and it'll be very, very hard, like to almost hard where you can feel it's tough to, to, to get rid of it. You don't want to eat that, but you want to eat all the good stuff that's in the middle. So I'm just basically peeling it down. Will it cook better too? Yeah, it'll cook better because you want to get the sort of more tender part, but this is all edible, right? So we don't want to waste any food. Um, I don't know about you guys, but we don't have extra money to spend on vegetables and just throw away. So, so I'm going to cut that. Now all these florets, that's what you're sort of used to eating with the broccoli, but the stem's also perfectly edible. And so what I would do with the stem, same kind of technique, got my hands on either side, knife point down, push through, and I'm going to quarter those and kind of dice them as much as you can dice something that's a rounded stem. And then those can go, again, in a bag in the freezer. You can freeze broccoli, and if you're not going to eat it quickly enough, for sure, you want it to be very dry. So if you wash it, I would let it air dry completely and then cut it up and put it in the freezer. But you absolutely can freeze broccoli. So if you end up with like a CSA box where there's like more broccoli than you could ever imagine you could use, you can freeze it. It's not as ideal as putting it straight into a, um, a stir fry, but it's totally fine. So this, again, I would put in a in a baggie in the freezer. So this is a freezer safe bag. So that's what I would do with the broccoli. And let's see, so sweet potatoes been scrubbed. I'm just going to dice those. So essentially I just take the very tips of the ends off. Look for any, you know, if there's anything that looks, I don't think any of these had any, okay, this was a little bit. Yeah, so if you have a, an end like this where it doesn't look very happy. Occasionally you might, I don't think this is actually mold, but occasionally there'll be like a little moldy bit. You do want to check and make sure. So oftentimes I'll just peel that bit off. But you do want to eat the skin if possible because there's a ton of nutrients in that skin. So you can see that end. It's not something I want to eat, so I'm going to trim that off. But otherwise everything's fine, right? So we want to get as much nutrition out of this as possible. It's so the same deal. I'm going to anchor at the knife, get the point down with my hand so I can't cut myself because my hand's up here and back here, right? Push through. <coughs> and this is just that same technique, so you kind of get the drill. The drill. I'm going to go ahead and prep those up. Uh, probably I might keep a little bit of the sweet potato out or in the in the um, vegetable bin in the fridge, and then the rest I'm going to pep up and freeze because I can pull those out, throw it straight into stir fry, straight into veggie hash. It's already prepped. If I wanted to make um, sweet potato soup, I might just cut it into bigger chunks. So that's another thing you might think about doing. Broccoli soup is also delicious, and I can post some uh, some recipes for those. Let me see what else I've got. So I've got celery, kind of same deal. Um, you know, you just take the ends off dice it. Yes, you can freeze celery, so that a lot of that will go in the freezer. So when you wash it and you put it on the, the, the dish rack there to I put dry. it on the dish rack so it dries. So I didn't wash all of it. Um, and then again, you know, I'm going to make sure it's dry. So you, you never want to put it in the fridge damp. Either it wrapped in a towel, because that will, the mold will start, the de decomposition will start much quicker. And then, um, oh, broccoli just went on the floor. Not ideal. And then let me just get back to these carrot tops. So, fortunately, I'm kind of running out of space here. Just shove that over there. Okay. So, something like this that's very long, I would 
probably throw in the food processor, quite honestly, because I want to just really mince these up. But to make it easier, you can kind of cut them in half. And then herbs. This is essentially an herb, right? And I'm going to just taste it to tell you. What does it taste like? Um, it's kind of grassy. Doesn't have a ton of flavor. Doesn't taste bad. And it's not super bitter. So it's important, like, every batch is going to be different. So if it's not super bitter, I can use more of them uh, in a dish at a time without it really bothering me. In terms so of like this, when you say, in the, is this going into a smoothie or, or what? So this could go in a smoothie. I would maybe have it go into a sweet smoothie to kind of mask the grassy, kind of herby flavor. Uh, <laughs> it can go into stir fry, it can go into veggie hash. You can make pesto with it. So pesto is usually Parmesan cheese, olive oil, some kind of nuts, pine nuts or walnuts. So in place of basil, so that's what some people use it for. I personally would just probably just use it. Um, you could also make it chimichurri, and I could, I could post the link for that. So that's an herb. Uh, it's garlic, uh, olive oil, a bunch of herbs, minced up really finely into a paste. Fantastic uh, for fish and chicken as a sauce so or steak. Um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, and then the other only other vegetable is the is the zucchini, which I would I would I've washed. I would dry it very thoroughly, store it in a plastic bag, and then only cut it as I'm using it. So you could freeze zucchini, but I wouldn't if you don't absolutely have to. And we prefer zucchini. I don't love it cooked, but I really like it raw. So I would just you know cut up 